Well, one thing that I think is really um, great about this concerto is that it just has a little bit of everything. Uh, it, people think of the Tchaikovsky as being this uh, big, powerful, almost bombastic, virtuosic showpiece, uh, but it starts off so gently and it's just so unassuming. I think that the, uh, the or orchestral opening is so gentle you would never know where it's going and then when it does introduce the first theme in the strings there's almost a kind of a, a dark undercurrent there that when the solo violin enters a few measures later and states that theme is completely gone or back into this beautiful most pastoral type of, uh, of world. It doesn't last for long. It gets uh, exciting pretty fast. But I do think that the opening is very special. For such a big piece, uh, it's quite a short introduction. Uh, the orchestra begins. Uh, So then this first theme is introduced in the violins, but it's uh, somewhat dark. And builds in excitement, builds in excitement, builds in excitement. And then the first violin entrance, I think, is just wonderful. Is it, uh, it comes right out from the orchestra into this, uh, this brief cadenza following which the violin restates that theme, but in just such a beautiful, open, warm way. I think it's just one of the most inviting moments in any concerto and just really draws the audience in for what will end up being a, a very long journey after that. The second theme of the first movement is very lush, very beautiful. I think one of the most famous melodies in any violin concerto. I'm sure many listeners will recognize it. Of course, the, the Tchaikovsky is known for its virtuoso fireworks, and uh, there's a lot of this type of writing in the first movement, very exciting stuff. And I think it's um, interesting to have a little bit of historical perspective that some of the writing was uh, very unusual for its time. There's a wonderful spot that happens twice in the first movement where um, this triplet type of figuration, he gets uh, working in double stops, and it's, uh, I think, to any young violinist, it's one of those famous passages that the first time you hear it, you just think, wow, that's great. I want to learn how to do that. <laughs> The movement continues with um, sort of a variation upon the uh, themes that were introduced and then builds to a large central cadenza that um, is, uh, was written by Tchaikovsky. So it's not one of those uh, cadenzas where the composer left it 
uh, to your discretion to come up with whatever you might want to. Uh, it was written by Tchaikovsky and it's, it's very effective and um, has sort of a central place in the movement. Um, a couple of very interesting uh, uh, effects. Uh, one of my favorites with a so-called left-hand staccato. I think that's a very neat effect. Um, Moving into the, uh, the, the episode after the cadenza, we have a very beautiful recap of that original theme where it is actually played by the flute and there's a variation upon it in the violin. And uh, we basically move through the, the same material that was presented in the, uh, the first bit of the movement with uh, a few extra variations. And then it all builds into an incredibly exciting coda uh, where the violin is flying all over the uh, orchestra is blaring away I think it's a it's a really uh, exciting bit of the piece where uh, it, quite often audiences will uh, will will think that the, such a big finale must actually be the end of the entire concerto and people will clap and um, sometimes I, I've seen people actually start walking to the exits <laughs> but Thankfully, there is uh, quite a bit more, um, including the, 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 well, the beautiful second movement, uh, the canzonetta, which I think is, um, it's interesting that for a piece this big, that the second movement is just that, just a canzonetta, just a simple, beautiful, very um, introverted piece of music. It was actually uh, his second attempt at writing a, a slow movement for this concerto. He wrote a meditation that he later uh, rescued from the uh, scrap heap <laughs> and uh, arranged for violin and piano in a set of three pieces that he published as his Opus 42. But in any case, this canzonetta, um, one thing that is very unique about it is it starts with uh, an introduction in the winds and the first string note that you hear uh, in the movement is from the solo violin, at which point the strings enter. <laughs> 